All right, champions, we've finally got this thing up and running, so uh, let's go over what was involved. So as we saw, saw in the first video, that uh, normal channel was modified to sort of be a Marshall-esque type thing uh, that got reverted back to stock values. Uh, lots of component replacements, uh, particularly because of value changes and also because of drift on the original components. And the, a lot of the cases we uh, had to replace the part because it had like tack solder leads or the, the terminals of um, one of the components we could have substituted or used from the old batch. The leads just didn't make it to the, uh, to the terminals because they were in a shorter position previously. So uh, we've got a mix of V-Shay, Yagio and uh, Panasonic components, uh, Panasonic for the film caps there. We've tweaked some values in the output stage, uh, the phase inverter coupling caps to minimize blocking distortion when pushing it hard. Uh, the trim's working beautifully, um, no ticking or anything like that. There was a few people commented about uh, including the, the capacitor to eliminate ticking. That's only really required if you've got to deal with non-ideal lead dress. You can see here I've bunched all the, the tremolo uh, leads going to that oscillator, oscillator valve very tightly to itself to keep it away from any signal lines. The uh, bypass caps that were previously mounted on the sockets back there and now have their own position on the board and we've uh, referred it back to some uh, smaller values in the bypass cap for the oscillator so when you turn the rate knob it doesn't stop oscillating for a minute. You probably witnessed that particularly on the, um, the reissues where they use a 25 microfarad um, bypass cap and every time you turn it it takes a second for the the trim to kick back in again that's uh caused by that so we've uh redone a lot of leads because uh <laughs> you can see everything that's sort of a bright white color is is new we've tried to keep the original look where we could um it became apparent as i was working on the thing that almost every lead had that green ooze coming out of it as soon as you heated the solder connections and it got to the point where some of the solder was all hard and crusty because it had chemically affected the lead in the solder so I replaced probably 50% of the wiring uh, over here there was just an utter mess we got rid of the uh, the uh, heater balance pot because they're known to fail that's another weak point in these things cleaned up the wiring in that area because that was an absolute clusterfuck obviously you saw in the last video I had to replace the sockets but that gave us an opportunity to clean that whole area area and just uh, redo all the wiring and make it nice and neat I've got some new heater wiring there the stuff they used originally was way too thick it was just ridiculously thick that's um, still 18 gauge wire but just a thinner jacket makes it a bit easier to manoeuvre uh, we've redone all the mains wiring we've got a new mains cord we've got all the uh, excess earth wire there because if the cord ever gets pulled out and it won't because it's nice and tight but if for some reason it ever pulls out uh, the earth will be the last thing holding on and um, these will be pulled off the switch that'd have to be a pretty violent event <laughs> all the pots are still okay uh, it became clear to me that the normal volume pot there was replaced at some point it's a slightly different um, pot the knob's cleaned up okay, but, you know, a few ch chunks taken out there, but um, that's part of its charm. We took the front panel off, because uh, when you take these these knobs off, um, there's a large hole uh, that doesn't allow you to get a socket onto the nuts of the pot, so I had to remove the face plate to get to the um, the pot nuts to tighten them up, and some of them were pretty loose, and that's, that's uh, often a method of grounding. Uh, we put in the bias balance and adjustment. See, we've got a uh, little trim pot down there that allows us to adjust the overall bias. And then we've got the uh, the balance um, pot mounted on the chassis there. We've added another cap to get an extra stage of filtering for the bias supply. This thing is dead, dead quiet. Um, I'm actually surprised how quiet it is when when everything's adjusted uh, let's turn everything all the way up that's all you're getting just a tiny bit of hiss slight hum but that's probably because the chassis uh unshielded at the moment when you put it in the cabinet there's the piece of aluminium on top to help shield it 
We've installed the new ET65s, so just about to wire them up. Michelle installed them for me last night because I was a bit over it. Cleaned the cab up. Next I'll uh, clean the, the reverb tank, it's pretty manky. The reverb tank is fine, its leads weren't. So I manufactured some new ones. We wanted to use the right angle switchcraft connectors but they're not in stock and I'd have to order them from the States. They'll take a few weeks, oh, probably a week to get here. I'm gonna replace this wiring because it's got melts and all sorts of stuff on it but um, I might try and keep that. No, nah, we might just replace that too. I'll put a nice switchcraft on it. I'll give him back that one for originality's sake. Well, all the old parts are going back to him. And there they are. It's like three kilos of parts. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. We've got a new set of tube amp Dr. 6L6s in there. Uh, the originals, we were going to try and hang on to them, but the uh, the locating key was broken off two of them and the writing on the tube just looked a bit discoloured, like they'd overheated. Um, so yeah, I wasn't a fan of leaving them in. And we've gone this far, like what's another, another set of 6L6s, eh? All the preamps came up all right. No real microphonics or anything there, unless you, like everything's maxed out, obviously you're gonna get a bit. But uh, they're performing okay, no, no serious noise. So they all get to live to fight another day. And I must remember to put the doghouse back on before I reach under this thing to move it. <laughs> Ask me how I know that one. So we're sitting at about 50%, 445 on the B+. Plus. That's about where I'm happy to be for this one. And we've got our heater balance uh, fusible resistors down there. I've thrown some uh, flyback diodes on there, fast recovery, just in the in the unlikely event that uh, someone pulls the speaker out and tries to play this thing, they'll uh, limit the the spiking and the high voltage um, that like would otherwise possibly arc uh, and destroy valve sockets and destroy the tr output transformer, etc., etc. So just another level of safety there. I've disconnected that dodgy looking main selector switch. I talked to the customer about that and he was happy to lock it into 240 volts. And I've just bunched up the uh, the other windings there, the other taps, and heat shrunk them all and just cable tied them securely, but haven't really shortened them at all. So if uh, they ever did want to return it back to an international model, that, that wouldn't be too difficult. So I've, I've disconnected the stupid boost switch. So that's just doing nothing now. The customer didn't even know that that had a pull out switch. So uh, not the end of the world. It sounded pretty terrible anyway. We've removed the bright cap across the uh, the master there. And uh, this thing's already bright as hell. Um, with a strat, you find yourself turning the bright switch off on the vibrato, but with a humbucker, it sounds nice and airy with it on. Uh, you know, it doesn't do anything, obviously, if you're maxed out, but anywhere in between, it'll, it'll add a bit of top end. So removing that pull boost is what allowed us to put these uh, cathode resistors and bypass caps for the... Uh, for these two stages uh, back on the board as per AB763 because that was previously taken up by the uh, the pull boost uh, circuit. So enough yammering, I'm gonna put this thing back in its cabinet once I've wired the speakers up and uh, we'll mic up the cab as, as it will be leaving here instead of using my test cab. Um, oh, same speaker anyway down the bottom, that's the ET65 and that's a Veteran 30 and that's my uh, workshop cab. Then we'll uh, just mic the thing up proper and do a bit of a sound test and then we'll get this bloody thing out the door because I, I bet you're all sick of looking at it so with everything maxed out there's a little bit of microphonics happening that's courtesy of v2 there so i might just swap that out with the taddy because uh it's not too bad now but when it's in the chassis uh sorry in the cabinet uh it's right next to a speaker could start getting some feedback or something. Now there is some very slight uh, microphonics happening in the output valves and the tube amp doctors. Uh, tube amp doctor red bass were my preferred series for everything but I've had what four sets now that have had microphonics in the output stage. Um, so it's kind of a case of that's just as good as we're going to get these days unfortunately. Um, that's just how it is because uh, the lesser of all the evils is Tube Amp Doctor and you know it's better than your glass cracking within two weeks like a JJ's or arcing over and destroying shit like an electroharmonics. <laughs> At least this is in my experience, please don't sue me. 
Actually, fuck it, sue me, I don't care, whatever. I'll go, go get a real job. So this one's open circuit or close to it, it's reading like 10 meg or something. And uh, she's overheated, because you can hear this. That's me gently moving it up and down, even pressure. You can hear that there, and then if you tap on it, There's like a little rattle there. So uh, that's indicating that the um, coil former is warped from excess heat and now it's rubbing on the pole piece which is in the center. So she's dead, Jim. And this one actually is okay still. I think I said it, it was the one exhibiting voice coil rub in the first uh, video, but yeah, this one's actually okay and it's still uh, functioning, um, but we've decided to replace both of them. So we've got a match pair. And don't they just look pretty? So the old ones will go back to the customer. You can make a fruit bowl out of this one or something. That'd be pretty cool. And uh, that one can go in another amp if you want. I don't know what it sounds like, but that's probably something uh, they could experiment with. All right, with a new tube amp, Dr. Uh, oh, wrong way. 12AX7 wall. Uh, premium selected microphonics have gone away with everything maxed out on the vibrato channel anyway. That's V2. All we're hearing now is a little bit of rattle from the output valves, but uh, that's about as good as it gets these days. I've gone through every manufacturer and uh, they've all got various uh, weaknesses to their current production valves and that is probably the, the best you're going to get. Gillette, the best a man can get. This is not a sponsored video. All right, so this thing just refuses to leave my fucking shop. So final uh, complication, there is a slight paper tearing buzz on the vibrato channel when you, particularly noticeable when you turn the tone down on the guitar uh, and play in the upper registers. So it's just a slight buzz. It's very subtle, but it's there. And now I've noticed it. I, it, I can't let it go. It's pissing me off. So, it only occurs when the reverb driver is uh, installed, the, the 12AT7 there. Uh, I tried, I talked to my bloody esteemed colleagues and uh, asked if they had experienced it. The suggestion was possibly that one meg grid, grid leak there for that valve. Um, it was not that. Or, try a different valve, it was not that. So I think what's happened is uh, at some point this has lost its load to the uh, reverb driver. And this looks like a replacement transformer anyway. It's not a fender. I think it's one of those shitty uh, uh, electro harmonics ones. What are they called? I don't know. I can't remember the brand. New sensor. Um, so I'm going to try a new transformer because I think it's arcing at the extent of the signal peak. And that's sending a spike back down that HT node. And that's getting into the uh, preamp signal as a slight buzz in the background on top of the note. So I'm going to sub one in and see what happens and uh, go from there. And then I'm going to cry some more. sounds like a faulty speaker but it's coming from both of them and these are new speakers so it ain't that and the fact that you pull the 12AT7 and it stops so uh, yeah more things to chase all right so I've substituted in a Hammond 1750A and no change it's still buzzing uh, I've changed the grid leak no result uh, changed the tube no result Alrighty then, so another, I don't know, two hours of fucking about and uh, finally figured out that um, it's the coupling cap that was an uh, orange drop, the famed orange drop that everyone loves so much. It's not completely gone, but it's it's dramatically improved by the, uh, the Panasonic that I've tempted in there, so I'll install that properly and uh, clean up and get this bloody thing back together. Jesus. Now one last thing I've got to do is uh, put the bare claws back on those sockets because um, when you're testing a new set of valves and if one of them's short or whatever 
you don't want to give the vendor a leg to stand on for refusing that warranty. So if they see a scratch on the base from the bear claws, I've heard off some of my colleagues uh, that they'll uh, refuse that warranty even though the valve's uh, malfunctioning. So we won't give them a leg to stand on there. But luckily all these tatties are performing okay aside from some minor uh, microphonics and we'll stick the shields back on all the preamp valves and get this thing back in its bloody cabin out of here, eh? So I didn't notice when I took this thing apart that I was missing one of the uh, the valve shields, so I'll just pop a belt in on there. A newy, a little bit shinier than the others, but this uh, being a uh, backline hire setup, we kind of want to protect the valves as much as we can because you don't know who's going to be throwing this thing around. She's all pretty and back in the cabinet. New speakers wired up. I kept the old plug for a bit of fender charm. I didn't want to replace the whole thing. We've already replaced enough how it is, eh? Nothing wrong with it. Just redid the, the new cable, new connections. The old cable had uh, two excess length on it, so it had touched the valves at some point and melted. So these are now too taut to be able to do that, but still fit inside that cover. There's the new uh, reverb cables. Uh, the pedal was in pretty shocking condition. Here it is here. And the uh, it's really, the wire, the, the jacket's really stiff. You, you can't sort of wrap it. You can barely bend it. Uh, and it's lost its sticker on the top as well. And that's the condition of the, uh, the connectors. So instead of, you know, rewiring that and everything and still not having the sticker, I just, I had a replacement one in stock for one of my own projects, so we'll just throw that in there. And uh, that's got longer length too, so you can set it up. I've put some cable ties on it, so it'll just sit in front of the amp, or you can unwind it and run it to the front of the stage if required, so uh, yeah. So I'll whack these back covers back on and we'll uh, plug it in and give it a sound test. <laughs> So typical of this fucking amplifier, I break a string while I'm doing the sound test.
Got plenty of headroom. Oh, and I almost forgot we chucked some new casters on there, just in the old top hats, but it's much more easy to manoeuvre now, being a heavy bastard. So there you go, Legends, she's finally done. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, I thought I'd break these videos up into little bite-sized portions instead of the, uh, the whole epic journey, because <laughs> uh, it's not as fun as it seems. <laughs> so anyway, See you on the next one. Hopefully it's not as much of a pain in the ass.